We are in the 2021 Kia Soul EV and today it is time to do the 10 to 80 charging speed test using the Electrify Canada DC fast charger located in Abbotsford, British Columbia. Just like we did last time, the test will be conducted as a real world scenario where we try to emulate a road trip. So we're gonna be driving the car for at least an hour on the highway, then we're gonna pull off the highway, plug in and charge. I'm going to be recording the whole charging session, obviously speed it up for you guys so you don't have to sit there for however long this takes. And we will see how quickly you can get back on the road when it's the perfect time to unplug and go because sometimes sitting up to 80%, it's not really worth it unless you need that range. So we'll find out the best time to unplug and be on your way again. So um, let me get there. It's gonna take a little bit of time, um, but I am very excited to see how well the Kia will do. We have completed the charging process and now let's have a look at the charging session. Are you guys ready? Let's get going. So as we start at 10%, we are hitting 51 kilowatt right away, which is great. I mean, um, it is winter, as you guys can see, two degrees Celsius outside temperature, all right? We did prepare for this uh, test by driving the car a little bit on the highway. However, you can never get the battery as warm as you can during the summer. So I'm pretty happy with what we are getting so far. So. As we move into uh, the 20% mark here, uh, that took about eight minutes to get to 20%, which isn't too bad, okay? Again, the Kia Soul EV has a 64 kilowatt hour battery, so it's a bigger pack, okay, than previous generations of the Kia. So I'm, you know, expecting that the charge is going to take a little bit more, but I would say it's still a pretty decent um, uh, speed when it comes to the price of the vehicle. So. 30% we're hitting at 14 minutes, okay, and uh, we have about 125 kilometers of range. And now we are hitting 73 kilowatt, which is almost at the top of what this car can do. So we're kind of fluctuating between 73, 74, perhaps maybe even we can go up to 75 and we're 20 minutes in. So obviously that's 75 kilowatt would have come much sooner had it been summertime. So since this is my car, I'm going to do a summer test too, to kind of compare and see what the differences would be. But yeah, you know, now we're basically steady at 75 at about 48% um, uh, state of charge, okay? So we're moving into the 50%, which for many people, 50% is more than enough. And that took about 26 minutes. So honestly, you know, um, that's when most people can just unplug if you're on a road trip and just continue. Um, so a half an hour charge is gonna give you about 230 kilometers of range. I'm talking about because this is the GOM, okay? The gasometer. so we're not really sure um, what the actual one is. So at 60, we're kind of going down into the, you know, high 50s, 58, 57, and that took about 34 minutes, okay? My question is, when will it start to taper? When do we see that drop down to the 20s or 30s? Um, so we're at 65 and we're still going strong here, um, close to 60 kilowatt. I'm guessing that we could have gotten that 70 well into the 60s, maybe even the low 70s, had it been summer, okay? So I'm definitely gonna redo this test. So we just hit 70%. Um, and we're still hovering around the 60 kilowatt hour mar uh, kilowatt mark. And now here's the big drop. So at 72, 73%, we dropped down to 35 kilowatt at about 43, 42 minutes. Um, so that is the time to unplug. Um, there is no point going up to 80% anymore um, because simply the, the time wasted and the money wasted getting there it's not really necessary unless you need that range, unless you're in that that road trip that needs that extra extra uh, percentage in the battery. And then basically we're gonna start going to the 20s now, almost at 80 and there we go. So that took 51 minutes in total, okay? So that's a little bit quicker than what the projection was on the screen as we plugged in. So. Is it good? Well, I don't know. Um, 
I would say for me, it is pretty good. You guys have to think about it, that this is a car that has a pretty large battery, yet does not have the charging capabilities of newer cars like the ID4, um, the Ionic 5, and the Kia EV6. Um, imagine this car with the same charging technology as the EV6. That would be tremendous. This is a perfect family car and hopefully maybe in the future they're going to update it. They're going to make it charge a bit faster. But overall, I would say that for most people on a road trip, you got to stop anyway. So having this kind of time where you need to wait and kind of see um, you know, uh, how much it takes, I think it's, it's, it's enough. So I've got some notes here and here are uh, basically the times that I would unplug and go. So the first unplug would be at around 54%, okay? So that took 29 minutes and four seconds. So if you don't need that much range um, and you know that you're gonna be charging at, a, at the next fast charger, 54% state of charge is enough. Unplug and go. Because after that 54%, it starts dipping into the 50s. And I always said, 50 kilowatt on a, super, on a fast charger, it's not awesome speed. That's the time when you're charging because you have to. You have to get a little bit extra just to get to the next charger. But if 54% is more than enough, I would unplug and go. Now, if you need slightly more range and you're willing to pay a bit more and sit there while it's charging, then I would say go up to 72%, based on my notes here, that's when it dips down to 37 kilowatt. And at that time, to unplug and go, it's the best thing to do. There is no reason to wait until it charges to 80 because 72 happens at 42 minutes. So that's an extra 10 minutes of waiting. Now, some chargers are per kilowatt. Some chargers are for per minute charge. Okay, it depends on the state in the in the U.S. and in Canada, they're all per minute. So if we're having a, you know an extra 10 minutes of charging time, that's about 20 cents per minute, it makes no sense to stay there. Might as well unplug and go to the next charger. So I would say for everyone, the best case is to unplug at 54 if there's a charger coming up. If there isn't, unplug at 72 and go. All right, you don't need to. Um, that's it. Uh, I, overall, I would say it's, it's, it's adequate. Um, winter time, yes, charging is slower. So I am going to redo the test in summer and just to see what the differences are. But you know what? I am happy. And then most people nowadays can get this car well under 40,000 Canadian dollars. Um, there is a lot of secondhand options right now because the car in its newest form with the bigger battery has been on the market since 2020. So. 2020, 2021, and 2022 model years um, have the same body style. So there's really no reason why you shouldn't be getting the, let's say, latest um, Kia Soul EV from 2020 onwards with the 64 uh, kilowatt battery pack. And that's a great road tripping car, great family car. Um, you know, a 40 minute charge when you have kids and you have family going to the toilet and getting drinks and all of that and stretching, uh, you know, your legs and, and things like that, it's, it's really not a deal breaker, I would say. Plus the sa savings over, um, you know, traditional ICE cars is, is tremendous, especially now with the gas prices being what they are. So yeah, definitely not the fastest charging vehicle nowadays, you know, there are faster ones. But as a secondhand purchase, I would highly recommend anyone look at the Kia Soul EV. Um, the 64 kilowatt hour uh, version of it is perfectly adequate for most people. And it's a great gateway car to get into um, EVs. And then on, if you do like it, you can look into getting something better. All right, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time. Bye-bye.